Songs aren't the only things that can be smashed together. Animals can be mixed up, either via natural breeding or crazy laboratory experimentation to form something brand new. Just like how you can combine several ingredients to make a meal. And we're going to show you some of the craziest. These are amazing hybrid animals that actually exist. Number 15. The Liger One of the more famous combos on our list, the Liger has its sexy combination coming from a tiger and a lion. Talk about an apex predator. These animals tend to be bigger than the two animals that produced it, and the females are actually fertile after the mix. The larger size the Liger, biologists believe, is due to what's called growth dysplasia, or the absence of the growth-limiting genes inherent in the original animals. Some of the largest ligers mostly grow up to be more than 3.3 meters and can weigh more than 400 kilograms, though there have also been reports of ligers weighing more than one ton. Even though lions and tigers do mate in the wild, it's pretty rare because of how distant their habitats are and how different they are behaviorally speaking. Some of the first crossbreedings to take place between the two came while they were in captivity. Many governments and animal rights groups also believe that the crossbreeding between lions and tigers is very unethical. Though I suppose I don't really see a problem from here. All I see are gigantic fluff monsters who could rip my face off. But they're so cute, I think I might actually let them do it. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. The Alligator Snapping Turtle now these are some mean, prehistoric, dinosaur-looking turtles. They may look mean, but when seen in their natural habitats, and not when they're hunting, they're fairly gentle animals. Although it should go without saying that you don't really want to get anywhere close to its jaws. At least not with anything that you'd want to lose. Unless you do want to lose a hand, then by all means go for it. Usually found in lakes, rivers, and canals in the southeastern United States, these turtles are actually the largest freshwater turtle in North America. They can grow up to 26 inches, weigh over 200 pounds, and that's a really chunky boy. Their shells sport some spikes on them, which help to deter any predator that may think they have access to an easy meal. The snapping turtle, because of this, has no real predators in the wild. Except for, maybe, you guessed it, humans. The way they hunt is pretty lazy, but also kind of cool. They lay motionless on the waterbed, and literally just open their mouth and stick out their tongue. Their tongue does resemble a little red worm, so when the turtle wiggles it, it actually attracts fish and frogs. And then boom, dinner is served. Number 13. The Zonkey Zonky, what a hilarious name for an animal. But that's what you get when you mix a male zebra and a female donkey. But what is the name when you mix together the inverse? It's even better. <laughs> a zebra donk. I'm not even kidding. Go look it up. I know I didn't believe it until I saw it. Animals never cease to amaze me. Because zonkeys are actually sterile animals by nature, they're quite a rare thing to find in the world. A majority of them live in different zoos around the world, and because of the obvious effects of crossbreeding, these animals serve as a great beginning point for any Darwin fanatics or anyone with even a remote interest in genetics and biology. Because of these missing chromosomes, along with their inability to breed, many animals, such as the zonkey, are not really considered hybrids in the end. However, it doesn't really stop me from wanting one as a pet, because they look super cool, and there's no denying that they have, by far, the coolest name ever. Number 12. The Savannah Cat Now, I have a cat. She's really small and chill. 
though the next one on our list is known as the biggest in the world. Not like a cat breed, including lions and leopards, but domesticated cats. Although the cat does look kind of like a leopard, or it's what I would imagine Babu, the ocelot from Archer, would look like in real life. Known as a warm and playful cat, the savanna cat is actually closer to a dog in its temperament than a cat is. The savanna cat is a crossbreed of a domestic cat with an African serval, and thus it's very large in stature. The crazy thing about them though, they could actually jump up to about 8 feet in the air. This also implies that they're very, very good at climbing trees, and no doubt the African serval side of them coming out on that one. Another super cool thing about the cat, they actually really love to play around in water. So when you're out and about with them and they get all dirty, don't really hesitate to give them a bath. They're probably going to love it just as much as when they got dirty in the first place. Looks like my kitty's going to be having a new playmate soon. Number 11. The Wolfen. Now what is going on with scientists? Are they really that lazy that they just smash two names of animals together to form a new one? You've got an opportunity to go crazy and you do it with a new name? Anyways, the Wolfen is of course a combination between a whale and a dolphin, and it has its origins in Sea Life Park just outside of Honolulu, Hawaii. Born to a male false killer whale and a typical female Atlantic bottlenose dolphin, the two animals shared an enclosure at the Ocean Zoo. And what do animals do when they get bored? Well, the same thing that humans do, apparently. And thus, the world was given this wolfen. It's the world's only living 50-50 hybrid of a whale and a dolphin. She is pretty cute if you ask me, though some people do consider her to be a freak of nature. And to them, I say, boo, get out of here. There are so many dangers, however, to interspecies mating, such as killing the mother and stillbirth, so you have to be careful, animals. Always do things safely. Number 10. The Beefalo. <laughs> now, this one is inexplicable. Guys, a buffalo actually got it on with a bumblebee. No, I'm kidding. That would be really wild, though. This one's much more basic than that. A wild buffalo was bred with a common farm cow, so that's how they got beef and buffalo, you know, the beefalo. Really clever farmers, very clever indeed. Just look at those big honkin' honkers. It looks like a male cow who just got super buff and skipped the crap out of leg day. When the beefalo are first born, they're actually really small, but it doesn't really take them long at all to morph into these gigantic beasts. While they do maintain the size and build of a bison, their hide is much closer to that of a cow, very short with coarse hairs that cover the body. The beefalo are a composite cattle breed that were developed in the United States during the early 1970s. It took Bud Basolo a while to find the perfect mixture of the two different breeds, but this mad scientist slash farmer really hit the jackpot with this bad boy. Number 9. The Koi Dog Alert, super cute doggo coming up. The Fluffy McFlufferson show here is what's called the Koi Dog, or a cross between a coyote and a dog. Now, I'm going to definitely put this one on my pet shopping list, which I think will only get bigger the further that we get into this list. Because the coyote is a pretty wild animal, and this alpha pack leader instinct can transfer over to the koi dog, making them quite confident and firm dogs. Because of this, it's not usually suggested to keep them as pets, unless you have a well-rounded knowledge of canine behavior in general, and will, therefore, be able to tame and dominate the pupper. If not, they could really become unmanageable and actually very dangerous for you and everyone else around you. So I guess I should take it back off of my list. This breed of dog was originally thought to be an urban legend, but thanks to the birth of the internet, photography, and real accounts, these dogs began popping up everywhere, and thus debunking the legend, proving it's the real deal. Now I swear, I will learn about dogs, and one day, I'll have one of these in my home. Number 8. Zubron 
It kind of sounds like a cool name for a luchador, doesn't it? Well, the Zubron is not actually a luchador, but a mix between domestic cattle and the European bison. So these guys are mostly found in Europe. This is kind of like a more chill and European looking version of the beefcake animal known as the beefalo, am I right? This breed of cattle has a pretty long history, so let me break it down for you. Before the onset of World War I, farmers in Europe were trying to breed a species of cattle that would be more durable and less susceptible to disease. In addition to this, they could graze on unfarmed lands and not need nearly as much husbanding as the normal cattle would. That's when they found the European buffalo and saw its potential. Finally, 100 years later in 1958, they got it right. And in 1969, after a naming contest in Poland, we finally have what we now call a Zubron. These are still some pretty substantial animals, coming in at a whopping 1,200 pounds. Like many crossbreeds, this first generation of males are infertile, but regain their fertility in subsequent generations. So well done, Europe. Keep the sustainable cattle coming. Number 7. Flying Fish Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a fish. That's right, a fish. There's actually a species of fish that can open up its fins when it jumps out of the water and can soar through the air. While the fish themselves can't actually fly per se, they can definitely glide through the air pretty quickly. I mean, they are still fish after all. The hydrodynamic build of the fish's body allows them to pick up a lot of speed underwater, roughly around 37 miles per hour. And then once they breach the surface, their two side fins open up, revealing what acts like a pair of wings. Just imagine fishing and getting smacked in the face by one of these. That would be hilarious! Anyways, these fish can usually grow up to be about 18 inches, which is no bigger than about three teacups. Omnivorous and widely seen, these fishes are luckily not on any endangered list. There are actually about 47 different varieties of flying fish in the world, and they're capable of gliding about 1,300 feet in one go. They really do get the best of both worlds, being able to live underwater and fly through the air. Talk about living out my dreams. Number 6. Mallards this is one of the breeds on our list that's probably the most commonly seen around the world. They're pretty much everywhere in North America, and odds are, if you're at a park feeding some ducks, they indeed are not actually little ducks, but rather probably mallards. They're very easily confused with ducks because of how closely they resemble them. But in reality, the mallard is the ancestor of nearly all duck breeds on the continent. When a female and male mallard couple up to have some babies, they're notorious monogamists. Although the male does tend to stray away and mate with other females against the wishes of all females involved. Those poor little lady mallards. This probably explains why we can find mallards everywhere, because they never stop getting it on. Once the breeding season is over, the mallards shed their flying feathers and become flightless for three to four weeks. Mallards are very strong flyers, being able to reach speeds of 55 miles an hour. Now, as we all know, they do fly south for the colder seasons so they can warm their little duck butts in the southern part of the United States. Welcome to the list of pets that I totally wish that I had, mallards. You guys are rocking those cute levels really hard. Number five, the geep. Now, anyone really want to take a guess at which two animals make up the geep? If anyone guessed a goat and a sheep, you would be correct. Born in Ireland to a farmer named Patty Murphy, how much more Irish does that name really get? It came as a pretty big surprise that even though he had seen some goats mating with the sheep, he didn't think anything of it until this little geep would be born, and then he had a shock to the system. 
Once the Geep came out, it was not only healthy, but very full of life and energy. The Geep was even faster than most of the sheep or goats that Patty already had. When he told his friends at the pub about the little Geep, they all just kind of laughed at him. But once he brought them around the farm to see it in action, let's just say the laughter turned into their mouths being agape. Patty's gone on record to say that the Geep is indeed an unusual character on his farm, causing all sorts of ruckuses, and this is the first Geep to be born in Ireland with most of the other ones dying upon or just after their birth. The poor little guys. I'm really happy that this one did survive so we can now all bask in his fluffy cuteness. Number four, the Growler Bear. Grizzly bears are actually pretty terrifying animals on their own, but take it and combine it with a polar bear and you've got yourself one heck of a nightmare predator. Experts believe that the mix happened because polar bears have begun traveling further south to try and escape the terrible effects of climate change and what it's done to their natural habitats. And in the process, they've crossed paths with grizzly bears and then only natural things have happened. The hybrid bear comes out smaller than a polar bear, yet larger than a grizzly. So although the bear's hair and feet are a pretty solid mix of the two, there's been no real official name that's been given to the mix. So we're just going to stick with Growler Bear for now, because the other suggestions are just downright embarrassing, honestly. The first Growler Bear would be discovered in 2016 on Banks Island, Northwest Territories in the far north of Canada, and for a not so cool reason, it's because a hunter had shot and killed one, and quickly discovered afterwards that it was unlike any other bear that he'd ever seen before. After this, there had been many other sightings in the nearby territories. Number 3. The Kama now I think they missed a really super cool opportunity to name this one. The llama and the camel mixed together should totally have been called the Kalama. Call it a Kalama. It's really fun to say. Anyways, the llama and the camel are not actually very different from each other. When we look far back in the genealogy of the two, we see that they actually share an ancestry in what scientists believe date to 30 million years or so, but whatever. Now all this time later, and we have the Kama. The creation of this creature is considered to be a miracle due to all those years of genetic isolation and then suddenly rejoining all this time later. The Kama can reach anywhere between 49 and 57 inches in height and weigh a maximum of up to a thousand pounds. The llama's soft fur has won out and also eliminated the camel's hump. Though the hump may be gone, the Kama is still very capable of drinking and retaining large amounts of water, and it also makes noises like a camel. With a lifespan of 30 to 40 years, the Kama was initially made by humans crossbreeding the two. Not that the two animals met in the wild or anything. The initial goal would be to create a large and strong animal with a mild temper that can weather the harsh desert climates. Number 2. The Zorse now, come on, let's just take a moment and be honest with one another. We all agree that the Zorse is way cooler than the Zonkey. It's like the cooler older brother that teaches the younger one about life and smokes and drives that Trans Am. This animal's all about the features of the horse, but also has the stripes of a zebra. The zebra aspect of the cross actually strengthens the Zorse against any certain pest that a horse normally would have fallen prey to. Unfortunately though, it's nearly impossible for a Zorse to arrive naturally in the wild without some kind of human intervention. This also means that you won't see one in the wild. But dry those tears everybody, because you can still totally go to the zoo and see one there. Zorses are pretty social animals, living in herds just like horses and zebras do. And the Zorse would originally be bred in England and Africa for the exact reason that I mentioned earlier. People were trying to produce an animal that was resistant to diseases that were being spread by African flies. The experimental mixtures gained popularity until the beginning of the 20th century when automobiles began to take over the transportation market. And as far as I know, cars don't really get diseases. Number 1. The Yakao The Yakao is a nice little hybrid between a yak and a domestic cattle. 
Native to Mongolia and Tibet, these breeds of cows are thought to be stronger and more productive than the usual boring run-of-the-mill cow. This is both in terms of meat and milk, and it's what we call in science the double whammy. So many of the yakals can be back-crossed, meaning that these animals actually share a similar genealogy, and therefore cross-breed quite easily in the end. Their strength also allows them to be able to climb the many hills and mountains that cover the Tibetan landscape. They're also able to weather the difficult altitudes. So if I were living in this part of the world, it sure sounds like these yakals would sure come in handy, and I'd have to get a huge herd of them. If there's one thing that's kind of disturbed me in all of this, it's that there are some species of animals that can be attracted to another species. Well, whatever floats your boat, Mr. Goat. I'm not gonna be one to tell you how to live your life. What are some of the craziest combos of animals that you can think of and that you would like to see happen? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.